and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will check in with the director of the Quincy Animal Shelter. Kit Burke will be our guest later on during the program. Provide us with an update. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, it's overcast, a little damp after some showers around this morning. 73 degrees right now. We'll see some more of those showers and maybe some pop-up thunderstorms this afternoon. Rather humid with highs in the low 70s. The showers will linger into this evening, maybe a passing storm this evening, lows into the mid-60s. It should clear out for tomorrow, back to summer sunshine. It'll be warm for sure and rather humid. High tomorrow in the upper 80s, hot and humid here on Wednesday, with a high in the low 90s, still pretty sticky on Thursday with the chance for some more showers and highs Thursday into the mid 80s. Again, 73 degrees and overcast in Quincy right now. Checking news for you today. Tomorrow is the deadline for candidates in this year's Quincy City elections to return their nomination papers to City Hall. Candidates have until tomorrow at 5 p.m. to submit their papers to the City Clerk's Office. The signatures of at least 50 registered Quincy voters are needed in order for a resident to appear on the ballot. Now, all six ward council seats, the three at-large council seats, three school committee seats, and the mayor's seat are all up for re-election this year. 16 of the 24 residents who've taken out nomination papers have already been certified to appear on the ballot. That was as of last Friday. Quincy Fire Department has a fourth ladder truck. Ladder 4 went into service at the Houseneck Fire Station on C Street on July 1st with the start of the new fiscal year. Four additional firefighters were added to the crew of that station to staff the new ladder. The ladder will be in service at all times. Quincy hasn't had a fourth ladder truck for over 30 years. In addition to Ladder 4, the ladder truck from the Wollaston station was moved to the West Quincy station and Rescue One has been relocated from Central Fire Headquarters to the Wollaston station. So there are now ladder trucks located at Central Headquarters, the West Quincy, North Quincy, and Howes Neck stations. A new ladder truck for the city is on order but could take up to a year for delivery until then. Quincy has purchased used ladder trucks, one from Harwich, one from Wisconsin. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says he'd like to see the city take over Wollaston Beach. In a recent interview with the Quincy Sun, the mayor said he feels the city can do a better job of maintaining the beach than the state. The move would need approval from the state legislature and the governor, State Representative Tacky Chan, whose district includes most of Wollaston Beach, feels that comment was politically motivated. He says a better idea might be to have the state hire the city of Quincy to maintain the property. Not everyone's going to be happy with me. So we try our best. Um, so, yeah, and also the bonds, right? The demand wants to pick up a ton of bond debt from the state. I mean, I'm sure he wants it for free, debt free, cash free, and probably even ask for a grant out of us. Uh, what's interesting has not been suggested is doing a maintenance contract with the state. That's not unusual. I mean, the spiders have helped out state properties uh, through a uh, maintenance contract where we would pay a municipality uh, on help on maintaining property. It's not unusual. Hmm. It happens in rural areas as well as urban areas. I mean, I'm just going to call it what you guys all know me at this point. I'm just going to call it what it is. I mean, you know, it's election cycle. And, you got, and we talked about earlier, I mean, it's one week to nomination papers or less now. But did it do it? Anything can happen. So, uh, and like I said, I have hope for a new DCR commissioner. I always do. The Chan says previous mayors, including James Sheets and William Phelan, also proposed city takeover of Wollaston Beach and Quincy Shore Drive, but that it never materialized. There are some changes coming to the red line this month to allow for some track maintenance. The MBTA says buses will replace trains between JFK UMass and North Quincy from 8.45 p.m. to the end of service tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday and on July 20th. 
and buses will also be replacing the trains between JFK UMass and Braintree from 8.45 p.m. to the end of service, July 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. The T says the crews will be performing critical rail and tie replacement work on the tracks that will alleviate speed restrictions. A wreath-laying ceremony will be held tomorrow at the United First Parish Church in Quincy Center, marking the 256th birthday anniversary of President John Quincy Adams. Every year, a ceremony is held to mark the birthday anniversary of both President John Quincy Adams, the nation's sixth president, and his father, President John Adams, the nation's second president. His birthday anniversary is in October. The tombs of both presidents and their wives are in the basement crypt of the church, known as the Church of Presidents. This year's ceremony for John Quincy tomorrow will focus on his legacy of equality. The wreath will be presented on behalf of President Joe Biden by Lieutenant Commander Alicia Ping from the Navy Operational Support Center in Quincy. Ceremony features the Navy Band Northeast's Brass Quintet and the Quincy Choral Society. Tomorrow's ceremony begins at noon and is open to the public. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we get an update from the Quincy Animal Shelter. That's next. Welcome back. It's been a little bit since we've heard from the folks at the Quincy Animal Shelter, so I thought it'd be time for an update, and who better to do that than the director, Kit Burke. Good to see you, Kit. Good to see you, too. Thanks happy, for having happy me. Happy summer. How's it going at the shelter so far? It's going It's going well. Yeah. Ticks are terrible down there. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, interesting. So there's so much marsh and, you know, all that around there. Okay. I'm, But I think it's bad everywhere, so people should put... Flea and tick preventative on their animals. Good advice, yeah. Yes. So, seeing we're talking about summertime uh, problems, um, how's the heat been for, uh, for animals this year? Well, at the shelter, it's been fine because, you know, we're in our newer building yeah. down behind the Kennedy Center. Um, it's central air. That's great. Um, and they're, they actually, it's kind of fancy. It's zoned, Ooh. you know, so <laughs> I know that's... That's something we didn't have before. Right. Um, and, and the volunteers are very careful, like w with walking dogs. You know, if it's really hot out, you take them out to go to the bathroom and maybe just a little bit around and then get them back inside, yeah. you know. And they obviously have access to water all the time and whatnot, so. Yeah. Um, hot pavement is an issue, right, for dogs especially? Yes. Yeah, you need to be aware yeah, of that. It's yeah, it's, uh, you know, one of the things that they, they say is that you can put those booties on them, but if you've ever tried to put booties on a dog, <laughs> most of them vote no. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but it is important for people to realize that hot pavement, you know, on a hot day can actually burn the pads of their feet. Yeah. It's, it's just skin, right? It's, yep. uh, there's no yeah, special protection careful. there. Yeah. Also, if you're going to be walking your dog on a, on a really hot day, especially the breeds that are called, I think it's brachiocephalic, but oh. pushed in, you know, Boston Terrier, French oh, okay. Bulldog. Uh, short snouts, yeah, short snouted. They, yeah. they struggle with the heat anyway, mm. so don't keep them out too long. Make sure you have water with you um, and whatnot, because they can get overheated before we do. Yeah, all good common sense things, uh, certainly. We talk about it every year, but cars get extremely hot very quickly, right? So don't leave your animal in your car. No. Yeah. It's, it's a, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it's really crazy that it could be like 72 outside with a breeze, but inside that car with the sun on the glass and whatnot, it can be up to 100 degrees. Absolutely. I mean, it's, people don't realize you know, how dangerous it can be. So. Right, yeah, so just don't do it. That's right, just don't um, do we it. We see a lot of times folks uh, let their dogs jump into the ocean. Is that okay? Well, I guess the first thing would be if the beach allows them well, right. to be there. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Okay. I'd let my dog go in the ocean. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I would think that salt water, you would have to have a way to, you know, rinse some of it off after because it can dry out skin. Yep. Um, but beyond that, I don't want to give bad advice. No, but right. Yeah, I, I don't know either. That's why I asked. So, okay. But you check with your rules of, of your beach, certainly, first of all. Yes. To see if dogs are allowed. Yeah. I mean, they let the dogs mostly when it's not beach 
weather and I uh, you know there's there's other places now that well, there's the dog park and there's right yeah um, and get a little kiddie pool and put it in your yard that's we have those down at the shelter okay for the dogs yeah there you go that like to play Seeing as we're talking about the shelter, um, I have to ask, because I'm sure folks will wonder, how's the construction of the new animal shelter coming along? Quarry Street is on hold. Okay. I, they discovered at some point recently that there's asbestos, uh, and I understand that to, to address it is not going to be a horrific problem, but it's still, you know, another... Time-consuming. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, as I said to you earlier, <laughs> you know, at least we're in a really modern, um, you know, well-lit, yeah. nice facility yeah. now, the, the temporary uh, shelter that, that they redid behind the Kennedy Center on East Guantanam Street. So, uh, if, if we have to stay for a while where we are, it's, it's way, way better than yeah. where we were. That's so, great. That's great. Um, but, it, but, you know, it's been going on a long time, so we just can't wait till those shovels really get in the ground. And I think once they really start construction, it'll move along. But sure. It's just getting started. Yeah. That's well, right. I mean, there were, you know, several roadblocks, uh, including a pandemic that got in the way. That's right. <laughs> and, and then costs spiraled after that. So Yeah. It, what happened from a, a financial perspective is it, it's mind-boggling. Right. Yep. How much things went up but the dog park is open up there right how is that working I, I was told that the that the street the road yeah. up was closed I oh. don't know if that's still true okay i I also was told that there's some people have been told they can go in from the back but I, I can't tell someone how to do that mm -hmm. um, I mean I would just check it out I guess okay you know there's there's no reason there's nothing going on negative at the dog park yeah. that I'm aware of. So. Okay, just accessing just could us. be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's the current population at the shelter kit? Well, we've been been running with probably about 25 cats ongoing. Okay. Um, the dogs are always far less. Um, probably we've run anywhere between like three and eight at a time. Um, but for the last, this is probably our third season of dogs, the numbers are just going up mm. and up. Um, years ago, there were far more dogs than there had been, say, through the, two, you know, since 2010 to 2020. But um, early on with the pandemic, there was talk about the fact that, uh, you know, when people went back to work, we'd get shelters in general would would get a lot of dog calls and stuff and we really didn't see that then but we see it now oh interesting there's a lot most of our dogs that we're getting are surrenders okay. um, or their transfers from another group that they took them as a surrender um, hmm. and then sometimes folks you know if an animal is compromised medically mm -hmm. or something and they can't afford to take care of it, they will surrender the animal in hopes that we can, you know, do that. And, you know, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But I think it's, I think it's, um, it's more likely now that if an animal's in a good home and it's something that, you know, could be treated and whatnot, we would prefer to try and help that family or person um, and keep the animal there because if we take the animal we have to treat them anyway right and then we have to find a home for them yep. so uh, you know it doesn't mean that we're rolling in dough but on a case-by-case -case basis um, where we can we will okay. you know, help um, we also were very fortunate a few months ago um, John McDuff who passed away a number of years ago, but he was a Quincy guy who was part of the uh, Quincy, oh, I'm going to forget the name now. But they did a lot of work with animals, but, but not cats and dogs so much. They were instrumental in, in 
Quincy can't have uh, circus animals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so they did a lot of good work in that regard. Okay. And um, as as the members got older and you know retired or passed or whatnot, the group ultimately went out. But uh, we received a very generous um, payout, for lack of a better word, from his estate, hmm. specifically to help Quincy residents with the with the price of uh, spay neuter. Mm -hmm. um, and so, w I'm not sure how we're going to manage that yet. But okay. if but if people have financial need and if they want to get their animals spayed or neutered, they should at least you know reach out to us. But but he specifically says it's Quincy residents. So. Okay. But it was a very generous, kind thing for him to do. Nice, nice legacy to leave. So. Nice, yeah. And I know there is a specific uh, cat that has some special uh, needs that you'd Nemo. like to help out. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Nemo is two years old. He's a, a pretty nice boy. Had I thought of it, I could have had some pictures here. He should be on our website. Okay. You know, if people want to take a take a look, he's in a foster home right now. But Nemo has. Um, irritable bowel <laughs> and uh, has had some crystals in his urine and stuff but but he's really a great cat and he's a young cat and his condition is being managed with prescription food so I mean I think he would be a great pet the, the challenge is that the the cost of that food is really high yeah. we're looking at about hundred and fifty dollars a month wow. and yeah. I know that that is beyond most of us to be able to feed a, a cat. Um, so we're looking for a creative way to provide some assistance to the right adopter. Um, and we're just gonna, we haven't worked it out yet, but okay. it's going to either be asking people if they would sponsor him for, I mean, it could be $10 a month. Okay. I mean, you know, yeah. It's not gonna be exorbitant. Um, or if they wanna make a donation in his name and that money would be earmarked by us you know, to to cover his needs, um, you got to get creative. Veterinary, like human, medical is is expensive yes. today. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, people watching may remember a few years ago we did dollars for Dante, the German Shepherd that had horrific allergies, and people generously, you know, donated like five thousand dollars. Wow. And a, an amazing couple came along. They they were perfect for this guy, um, but we've worked it out with them that we still support them with some of his allergy meds, sure. and it's okay. because of people's generosity and having that money earmarked for him that we're able to do that. Yeah, it's so. kind of a cooperative effort, right? Yes. Um, yes. The, the, you know, the, the pet gets a forever home, and the owners get some help to treat their special needs. Yeah, I mean, some yeah. of it's just above and beyond. And, you know, when you're looking at $150 a month for it's cat food, it's going to eliminate yeah. most adopters. Right, yeah. You know? But if there's someone out there that, that wants to take that on, then, you know, we'll certainly consider that. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the nice thing about the new, you know, quote-unquote new location, yeah. you have s separation now between dogs and cats, right? We do. Yeah. And it... It has really made a great difference, I think, especially for the cats. Um, anyone that was at Broad Street in the past, literally the dog kennels ended, the cat cages started. They were right there, yeah. Uh, and it was tough. It was also bad for the cats because there was no daylight. Not right. that there was any for the, you know, much for the dogs either, but uh, they did a great job with natural light in that building where we are, and um, it, it just seems to be from a health perspective, mm -hmm. uh, making a difference. And then, you know, the dogs are in their section. Uh, and, you know, they have access. They don't have direct access from their kennels to the outside, but, you know, they don't have to be walked. We used to have to sometimes walk them by the cats yes. and whatnot. That, yep. that's, that's not an issue anymore. Okay, so. that's great. So it's much, much more friendly for both people yes. and pets. Yeah. Yes, Which it is, is great. And volunteers are key, right? Can't do a any right. of our job without them. I, we lost some people at, through the pandemic, mm. which I think happened a lot of places. Um, some of our great folks came back. Um, but we've probably for the last year 
have been adding a lot of new volunteers, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, you need fresh blood, <laughs> you know, I, and we, we have, I don't know the exact number, but we have over 100 volunteers. Oh, easily, yeah. And, you know, two shifts a day, yep. cats and dogs and whatnot, and, uh, you know, the volunteers are just great. You know, they, they come in to do a specific job, whether it's cats, dogs, or whatever, but so many of them you know, will step up and say, what else do you need or whatever, and uh, it's, they're a great group. Yeah. They just are. Um, how does one become a, a volunteer kit, and, and what, uh, what's the, the training involved? Well, they, they can go on our website, okay. which is quincyanimalshelter.org, um, and then there's a drop down, so for, like, how to help, and then I think it's volunteer. Okay. There's an application there uh, and whatnot. Uh, they also can stop in when we're open, which right now is Saturdays 10 to 2. Um, and, you know, we would look, we would tell someone what, what our open shifts are, you know, where we have the greatest need. Um, some people do become what we call cross-trained so that they can do cats or dogs, but typically people would start in one area. Um, they would be mentored by uh, a senior volunteer for three or four weeks, um, and then they kind of get tossed out to, <laughs> no, I, but the, we always would try to have someone that, you know, can, can back up. Sure. It can be a little overwhelming for someone new. I would think, you know? yeah, especially yeah. if you're not familiar to be around animals, right. you know, if it's brand new right. to you, sure. But uh, we're very fortunate, we've just got a great group of people, and from all walks of life, really? you know, I've always marveled at the fact that there's volunteers that I would have never met in my normal course of life. Hmm. Um, and yet, I mean, doctors, plum, whatever, whatever it is someone does. Yeah. Um, someone that stays home and takes care of a family. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a very um, diverse bunch of backgrounds, I guess I could say. A representative of the city itself, right? Yes, yeah. that's a good way to put it. Yeah, which is nice. Uh, any events, uh, special events coming up that folks should be aware Well, of? we have something, I think it's October 7th, that is going to be at what I'm told is called the Braintree Beer Garden. Okay. There's something, um, there's, a, I guess, an annual cornhole event. It sounds fun, yeah. but, you know, I really don't know. It's the latest know. and greatest thing, I guess. So yeah. that will, uh, there'll be more information about that. Okay. And then um, the... The Saturday before Thanksgiving, again, I don't know the date, but yep. it's the day that we use every year for our annual holiday fair at the Kennedy Center. Yes. Yep. Typically it's 10 to 3, but all of that, there'll be more information coming on social media, um, on our website, mm -hmm. and hopefully as well in our building. And then we've been successful the last couple of years bringing back the calendar um, so that is also going to be um, done again this year. Oh, okay. I think one year was the firefighters were featured. Oh, yes. They actually are the ones that did that. They did an oh, okay. amazing job. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was that was very popular. Yes, it yeah. was. <laughs> so um, right now we're still coming off of not doing huge events. You know, just still kind of rebounding from all of our COVID years, but um, yeah. but for fourth quarter anyway, that's basically what we're looking at. And okay. we'd love to have people participate, check it out. Right, participate, right, or donate, or both, <coughs> yeah. And then, <coughs> excuse me, we also will have, you know, open house okay. at the shelter. And that's usually a, a fun time with refreshments and things for sale and whatnot. Sure. Invite people to come down. But they're invited any time we're open to come in and you know, see what we do, check out the animals, even if they're not looking to adopt it right then, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Can, um, <coughs> if somebody can't make it on the Saturday hours, can you arrange a special time? Yeah, them? if, if I'm, um, I mean, because it's, it's so volunteer yes. <coughs> yeah. focused, I would, um, I would not commit to a um, special appointment just to take a look around. Oh, right, no, no. Okay, right, but, but if but someone really had some interest in um, you know, adopting an animal or whatever, we can accommodate by appointment. Okay. 
Um, and then surrenders are always by appointment. Okay. You know, if someone has to give up an animal. Okay. Yeah. Don't leave it outside the door, right? No. Yeah. We've heard stories That's like happened. that. I know. Yeah. All cats, dogs, rabbits, guinea pigs, ferrets. They've all. It's just, if someone has to give up their animal, I, I can appreciate that sometimes they're embarrassed. Yes. Sometimes, you know, they're unsure. Um, but at the very least, <clears throat> it's so important for us to know the animal's name, their age. Do they have any medical Background, stuff? Background, right, exactly, you know, yep. Instead of us starting from zero. Right. So, yep. you know, it's... It's a judgment-free zone in terms right. of that. You know, I'm, things happen, and we understand that. But, you know, please don't just dump the animal outside the door. Always great to see you, kid. Thank you so much for the update. Thanks for having me. It's Always good a to pleasure. Be back. Yep. <laughs> we'll have to bring some furry friends with you next time. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Keep an umbrella handy because we'll see some pop-up showers and storms with highs in the low 70s this afternoon. Unsettled this evening as well. Back to uh, summertime mode tomorrow with lots of sunshine and warm temperatures. Kind of hot here on Wednesday and more showers possible on Thursday. Thanks again to Kit Burke for joining us from the Quincy Animal Shelter. Thank you. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Friday, it's Robert Pearson from the Norfolk County RSVP program. Meantime, head over to our website, please, qatv.org. Our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.